Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, this is Lithium017 from my channel Nintendo Collecting 101, bringing you collecting tip number 26. This one's called Sports Games Suck. Now I'm not saying sports games suck, I just mean sports games suck in terms of collecting. There are obviously exceptions and I will talk about those, but a lot of the sports games recently have almost perfected the series. The NHL games of late, recent games, have been absolutely amazing, they've been great. I'm not knocking the gameplay or the games themselves, I'm just saying in terms of collecting. This has been the case for many, many generations of games, but if the game says like NHL 94, and then the next year there's NHL 95, 96, and so forth, same thing with NBA or baseball or even soccer, if they have the year attached to the game, normally in a few months after this original sale, when it's going for 60 bucks, it'll drop down to half that price, and after a few more months or a year, it'll be in the bargain bin because the new game's coming out. If the year is attached to the game, generally, that's not going to be highly desirable. There is exceptions. One of the exceptions is, I think it's called NCAA 2K3 for the GameCube. That's one of the rarest games for the GameCube. It's just not sold very well, and there was only limited quantities, so it's very rare, and it's highly sought after by collectors. There are, obviously, other exceptions to this. What makes a sports game desirable? Well, when it's attached to a popular character like the Mario Kart series, or really, let's just go into any Mario sports game. What do these have different than normal sports games? They allow the player to do something that is very out of the ordinary. In Mario Kart, you can get items and shoot them at your friends and things like that. In the Mario series, other sports series like golf and strikers, which is soccer and baseball, those ones you can just do crazy things while you're playing sports. So it's not just the sport, it's the sport plus fun other stuff that's added to it. These make the games unique, and on top of that, the very important thing is, basically, there's only one of these per generation. Because there's only one of them per generation, normally they're sought after by everyone who owns that console. That makes the game more desirable because they're not coming out every single year, not just being rehashes. Mario Party, it's popular every year, I don't really understand it, but it somehow works. Other popular games like this can include the Super Punch-Out series, which is, again, the same kind of thing. It's a different take on a sports game that allows for a bit more fun and character, especially in the villains and all the other guys that you're fighting. The NBA Jam series, excellent example. That one has crazy slam dunks, and you can, you know, have codes to slam dunk from half court. Obviously, the ball goes on fire. It's a little bit ridiculous, and they don't come out every year. There's a new one that was released in the past few years, and it's great, too. So sometimes that's more desired by collectors. The Tony Hawk games aren't that desired by collectors. Some people, they're really good fans. I just mean, the games don't really maintain their value because there are so many Tony Hawk games. There's so many Mario games, but they don't... It's not just one per generation. When they were one per every year, the original games like Mario, uh, Tony Hawk uh, 1, 2, and 3, they kind of maintain their value because they're fantastic games. And just recently, there is a Tony Hawk HD that was released that you can download if you're interested in playing that. It's a lot of the best levels from the first three Tony Hawk games, if I'm not mistaken. Great game. I think it's 20 bucks though. But the Tony Hawk series hasn't maintained its value quite as much. I think it's simply because the games are released almost every year. For sports games, if it has the year in the title, normally stay away from it. But if it's only a one of per generation that you can consider maybe getting it. And if it has some sort of quirky twist to the sports game, like a Mega Man Soccer, that's very, very different and it's directed towards Mega Man. That's my tip for collecting sports games. Normally stay away unless you really know what you're doing and you know all the differences between what will become maybe rare and what will just fall flat on its face within a year. Have a great day everyone. Thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe.